introductory remarks. Um, we are live on air, uh, Dermot, so I will send you some notes. Uh, Thank you, very, very kind. I'm sorry, I should have thought of that earlier. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Too bad yet. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> Okay, we can start now. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to welcome all of you to the launch of the regional training center supported by TDR in the Western Pacific region. My name is Ainul Naziha Muhammad Hanafia and I am the MC for today. Our event this afternoon will last approximately one hour and is being streamed live on the University of Malaya's Faculty of Medicine's YouTube channel. It is open to the public and we have provided the link and QR code for this in the promotional posters. Ladies and gentlemen, should you wish to ask questions during the event, kindly use the Q&A platform and we will try our best to uh, address your questions within the event um, period. However, due to technicalities, only guests in the Zoom platform are able to put forward questions. We apologize for this shortcoming. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Regional Training Center or RTC is established by the Malaysian Global Health Consortium, which comprises of the um, United Nations University, International Institute for Global Health or UN UNUIIGH, the Institute for Health Systems Research uh, at MOH and the Department of Social and Preventive Medicine, Faculty of Medicine at the University of Malaya. The aim is to facilitate engagement between academics, policymakers, and healthcare practitioners through implementation research related trainings and activities. I shall not say much uh, more about the RTC as it will be introduced later on, but suffice to quote this. We spend billions on health innovations, but very little on how best to use them. Only by coming together can implementers with their in intimate understanding of context and researchers with the understanding of methods and science of inquiry hope to advance our understanding of the implementation issues that compromise so many of our public health endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, to kick off our event this afternoon, we will have welcome speeches by the heads of three consortium members. Without further ado, let us invite firstly to deliver her welcome address, Professor Dr. April Camilla Roslani. Dr. Professor Dr. April is the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Malaya. Over to you, Professor April. Thank you very much, Dr. Ainul. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, Datuk Dr. Hisham Shah, Bin Mama Ibrahim, Deputy Director General of Health for Research and Technical Support, Ministry of Health Malaysia. Dr. Noor Iza Binti Haji Ahmad Shalki, Director for the Institute for Health Systems Research, Malaysia. Professor Pascal Elote, Director, United Nations University, International Institute for Global Health. Professor Dato Dr. Adiba Kamarul Zaman, Chair, Regional Training Center for Western Pacific Region and Professor of Infectious Diseases, Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. Dr. Zalila Abdullah, Institute for Health Systems Research. Dr. Dermot Maha, Unit Head Research Capacity Strengthening Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum, salam sejahtera and good day to you all. 
It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the official launch of the Regional Training Center supported by TDR for the Western Pacific region. TDR, the Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases, has been instrumental globally in harnessing scientific collaboration to fight diseases of poverty. It is co-sponsored by the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, the United Nations Development Program, the World Bank, and the World Health Organization. Through implementation research, collaborators have been able to contribute to more effective public health policies and programs. And this is particularly needed in developing countries in order to materialize evidence-based interventions and achieve sustainable development goals. This also aligns very well with University of Malaya's vision of being a global, impactful and sustainable Institute of Higher Learning. As Malaysia's pioneer university established in 1949, it is no surprise that University of Malaya also boasts the first academic public health department in its faculty of medicine. The Department of Social and Preventive Medicine focuses on health policy and management, epidemiology, biostatistics, family health, occupational and environmental health. It serves as a hub for carrying out rigorous public health research in Malaysia and currently houses three specialty research centers. These partnerships and international collaborations have been instrumental in bringing together the multidisciplinary expertise needed to train the next generation of public health researchers. Most recently, we have been awarded three collaborative grants from the Fogarty International Center at the US National Institutes of Health. These include the Malaysia Implementation Science Training or MIST in HIV program in collaboration with Yale University, Capacity Development for HIV and Mental Health Research in Asia, together with the Foundation for AIDS Research, and establishing a postgraduate program in health research ethics in collaboration with Johns Hopkins University. With this track record, I believe University of Malaya is well poised to lead the efforts to host the Regional Training Centre. The proposed RTC will be established, as mentioned before, and maintained by the Malaysian Global Health Consortium. And this consortium approach allows for the creation of an RTC that leverages the complementary strengths of the institutions involved while enhancing capacity within each of the partner institutions through collaborative co-management. I am confident that this RTC will play a key role in expanding the public health and clinical workforce in the Western Pacific region, particularly in the growing field of implementation research. And I look forward to supporting its activities. I wish you every success. Thank you. Thank you, Professor April, for your enlightening speech. Next, we invite Dr. Noriza Binti Haji Ahmad Shauki to deliver her welcome address. Dr. Noriza is the Director of the Institute for Health Systems Research at the National Institutes of Health, NIH, Ministry of Health, Malaysia. Dr. Noriza, the mic is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and very good afternoon to everyone. And thank you for the chairperson for the kind introduction. Datuk Dr. Hisham Shah bin Muhammad Ibrahim, Deputy Director General of Health Research and Technical Support, representing the Director General of Health Malaysia. Professor Dr. April Kamila Roslani, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. Professor Datuk Dr. Adiba Kamaruzaman, Chair WATDR Regional Training Center for Implementation Research for Western Pacific Region, and also Professor of Infectious Diseases, Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. Dr. Pascal Elote, Director, United Nations University, International Institute for Global Health, UNUIRGH. Dr. Demok Maher, uh, Coordinator for Research Capacity Strengthening and Knowledge Management, World Health Organization, Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in today's world, evidence is an essential component of policy processes and decision-making. 
the establishment of the Malaysian Global Health Consortium for Implementation Research Platform as a regional training center supported by TDR in the WHO Western Pacific region is indeed relevant in the pursuit of translating evidence into practice. Such a platform creates opportunities for multidisciplinary professionals with various expertise and experiences, whether researchers, policymakers, implementers, or members of the community to engage fostering collaboration within and between the regions. At the Institute for Health Systems Research, the focus of our work aims to promote the application of research findings into solution with our tagline, taking evidence further to improve the health system, for example, in delivery of services and quality of care. Features of a desirable health system are many, from being sustainable, equitable, responsive to resilient, this can be learned via experiential learning. Through implementation research, the space between researchers and implementers can be bridged, effective methods and strategies can be adopted, and implementation research tools promoted for uptake by others. Since 2018, ICHSR has been in collaboration with UNUIRGH in conducting implementation research workshop, workshops for researchers and stakeholders from various programs in Ministry of Health. Series of lectures and active facilitated discussions were carried out to aid participants' understanding to undertake research projects that enhance implementation of interventions to target population. With the establishment of this platform and creative teaching approaches by the committee, it is hoped that the understanding and application of implementation research can be escalated. We also hope that research capacities are strengthened and the value of implementation research as a mechanism to deliver effective interventions to the population will be appreciated by the multi-level policymakers and implementers. Thus, further promoting the uptake of evidence in practice. Further, with academicians, researchers, and stakeholders working together, rich perspectives of the local context can be gained. Malaysia is characterized by a dichotomous health system, and assimilation of implementation research tools have the potential to shed new light on strategies and potential solutions towards achieving the overall aspiration of a nation working together for better health. These solutions can then be adapted and adopted to others. This platform also presents an opportunity for the health policy and system research community in the region to engage actively in establishing and moving forward with an agenda for targeting global health challenges, especially those that are relevant to the region. There are many challenges still in ongoing addressing infectious diseases in addition to rising NCDs and issues of aging populations, just to name a few. Finally, it is a great pleasure for us to be part of this alliance. Congratulations to the organizing committee from the consortium and to all that have been working hard towards this establishment. Your hard work is truly appreciated. Let's look forward to the upcoming projects and updates. Thank you again for your attention. Back to you, Aino. Thank you, Dr. Iza, for the warm welcome. The last of the welcome speeches is by Professor Pascal Alote, Director of the U United Nations University International Institute for Global Health, UNUIIGH. Professor Alote, please take it away. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable Deputy Director General, distinguished colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us for this lovely occasion. In these times, any positive news is to be celebrated, and this is very good news. The United Nations General Assembly in 1972 decided to establish the United Nations University, UNU, um, as a bridge between the United Nations and the academic community. A year later, the charter was adopted um, and UNU was formally inaugurated in 1975 with its headquarters in Tokyo, Japan. 
Several UNU institutes and programs have since been established across several countries on topics that have been identified as priorities for thought leadership, policy analysis, and priorities for global peace and security. The idea to set up the UNU International Institute for Global Health, UNUIIGH, was first mooted by UNU and the World Health Organization in 2000 to address issues of global health and public health systems. A feasibility study carried out by a team of international experts found Malaysia highly favorable as the host for the proposed UNU Institute. Based on Malaysia's significant development during the prior three decades and the exemplary performance of its health system. UNU IIGH was established in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in 2007, with a generous endowment from the government of Malaysia as part of its voluntary contribution to the United Nations. And it's hosted by UKM at the hospital Chancellor Tuan Hu Muris, the medical campus in Cheras. The vision for UNU IIGH is to be a leading and innovative center for policy research and capacity building in global health. UNU IIGH seeks to contribute to the development and strengthening of health policy frameworks and health interventions towards enhancing health and well being, particularly in low and middle income countries within the context of equity, social justice, and human rights to ensure that none is left behind. With a particular focus on approaches to health in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, we have a global mandate to support the UN agencies and programs and member states. Our work in Malaysia and in the Asia Pacific region focuses mainly on capacity development for local decision making. I'm therefore absolutely thrilled with the outcome of the proposals submitted to WHO TDR to designate the Malaysian Global Health Consortium as the Regional Training Center for Implementation Research. The designation recognizes the strengths of the network of experts available to UNUIIGH, the robustness of the growing global health program at the University of Malaya and their academic partners, and critically, the grounding and application um, to real life of the health interventions that is brought together in the partnership with the Ministry of Health through the Institute for Health Systems Research. Before I hand over back to Dr. Aino, I'd like to acknowledge the hard work of the team that put the proposal together from all three institutions in spite of the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. This time last year, we were running around like crazy trying to put this thing together. For you and you, IIGH, I would particularly like to give a shout out to Dr. Mike Penkunas, who had, who had this um, pro process and project lobbed at him within weeks of him starting with us at the Institute. Uh, Tansri Noor Hisham and the global health team at the Ministry of Health have always been supportive, as has um, Dato Maimuna Hamid, um, who has just completed her term on our International Advisory Board, and Tansri Zakri Hamid, who was the chair of the International Advisory Board until the end of 2017, but continues to be a very strong champion for UNU IIGH. I would finally like to acknowledge Dr. Pascal Lunois and his team at TDR, who have been wonderful partners, always responsive and undeniably dedicated. Terima kasih, merci beaucoup. Thank you, everyone. Back to you, Dr. Ayn. Thank you, Professor Alati, for the nice introduction to you and you, uh, IIGH and the world welcome as well. So welcome speech is done. Uh, we now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the introduction to the regional training center supported by TDR in the Western Pacific region. To introduce us to the RTC, we welcome Yama Bahagia, Professor Dato Dr. Adiba Kamaru Zaman, who is the chair of the RTC of the Western Pacific region and Professor of Infectious Diseases, Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. Professor Adiba, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aino. Assalamualaikum. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Before I launch into the introduction of the Regional Training Center um, and give you a, a flavor of what this center intends to do, let me add my thanks to um, everyone who have 
work, everyone who has worked really hard to bring this uh, center together, particularly colleagues from UNU and uh, Pascal and um, Mike, I think needs a, a, a special shout out for the vision that they had in, in putting this together. And of course, our colleagues, Dr. Zalila from IHSR and, uh, and the team and here at UM, um, uh, Malini, uh, who's managing the project at the moment as the project coordinator and of course, uh, Sanjay and the entire team at SPM. And uh, for WHO, TDR in um, giving us the honor here at Faculty of Medicine to host this regional training center, as was already mentioned uh, by Professor April, our Dean. Uh, we also uh, fortunately um, have a few other uh, implementation research programs that I think will enhance the work that we hope to bring to the RTC through the um, uh, Fogarty training program, uh, which we are cooperating with or collaborating with Yale, where we're sending members of the faculty as well as PhD students over to Yale for on-site training as well as uh, online training when they're back here in Malaysia. And also the training through Treat Asia um, and the Chimera program also supported by Fogarty training. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, Annette Son, the executive director of uh, Treat Asia, who's here with us uh, online. So thank you, Annette, uh, for joining. Now, in terms of uh, the program that we've outlined for the Regional Training Center, as we heard, uh, this is a special program supported by the research and, uh, research and Training in Tropical Disease at WHO TDR, and its main focus, as uh, has been repeatedly said, is uh, on implementation research. And uh, the three members of the consortium that you've heard uh, introductions from just then. So the, the year one activities that have been mapped out include integrating the existing um, work of network of existing uh, regional training centers from other region. And uh, we hope that this w WP, this uh, Wipro regional training center uh, will combine and uh, collaborate and harmonize with the other regional training centers of the WHO networks. We hope uh, to produce IR-related training material and incorporate them into the University of Malaya, MPH, and uh, DRPH programs, and that work is currently ongoing. And uh, we also hope to, to have further training in the Western Pacific region on implementation research. And of course, uh, all good programs require um, solid monitoring and evaluation and uh, all that is currently in place to ensure that we have a, um, a robust program. So in terms of integrating into existing regional training center networks, uh, we have engaged and will continue to engage with established uh, regional training centers. And uh, we have done so with the uh, CRO network, and we hope to continue to do that with a goal of um, identifying um, challenges and potential hurdles, but also um, of uh, um, programs that would uh, be of benefit to both to, to to both centers and, and um, uh, other centers in the global network. And as part of the integration uh, planned, uh, when COVID-19 allows us, we hope to conduct exchange visits with existing regional training centers. In terms of the second uh, plan activity for this year one, um, and this has already uh, started with uh, incorporating uh, in, um, IR component into UM curriculum, as, as mentioned, into both the MPH and the, um, DRPH programs. Um, and so we have, uh, with the goal of students, will have a firm understanding of implementation research and also strengthen pipeline of graduating public health professionals in the region in implementation research. 
as part of that alignment, um, uh, as mentioned, the, the MIST program that's supported by Fogarty, it's also it's in its uh, first year of implementation as that program grows, um, that also will, uh, we will align and harmonize with uh, this uh, TDR, uh, WHO TDR uh, training center. As, uh, set, as uh, third uh, activity in the, um, uh, in the network, what we hope to do is to become as a satellite um, implementation training uh, center in the region. Obviously, we, we hope to conduct short workshops and mini MOOCs um, that will be targeted at researchers and healthcare implementers. Um, our colleagues in the Ministry of Health, particularly IS, uh, IHSR colleagues already have many programs uh, on the ground that uh, we will be mapping and uh, it be inviting those uh, implementers and, and researchers, not just at the University of Malaya and UNU, but hopefully in uh, other universities in Malaysia and the region to uh, be trained in implementation research. And in terms of uh, monitoring of our activities, uh, we will be, uh, this will be done by a designated research officer with longitudinal follow-up of trainees. Um, and through this monitoring and evaluation, what we hope to achieve, of course, is uh, the knowledge of any gaps and challenges uh, in order to continually improve on the program and uh, allow us to refine the strategy and delivery of future training uh, materials and methods. So with that, th those are the activities that um, have been outlined for this first year. Um, as you, you know, the, the challenges that we face um, with uh, the pandemic is, um, is quite, uh, you know, it's, it's not as all of you, I'm sure, uh, know, it's, uh, especially those of you involved in teaching and learning, it's, it's not an inconsiderable challenge. But fortunately, there is already uh, quite a, a bit of material, particularly the MOOCs um, from WHO TDR that uh, we will adapt um, into, the, into this regional program. So um, I know our colleagues in, in, the three, in, in each of the three uh, members of the consortium have been working very hard. We have uh, working groups uh, who are working on each of the areas that I've mentioned and inshallah, uh, we will be able to have a very successful uh, training program in the years to come. Implementation research is somewhat new uh, in Malaysia and, and, and perhaps the region as well, but as mentioned by all our colleagues uh, in, in the introductory statement, um, there's much to, to be done. And uh, we hope with the, um, with, with the methods and uh, rig rigorous methods of implementation research and training that uh, we achieve, uh, through this program, we will see much better, not just implementation, but also monitoring and evaluation of all the health programs that we introduce into this country. So with that, thank you very much. And um, over to our MC, Dr. Aino. Thank you, Professor Adiba, for the very informative uh, introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we move on, uh, I wish to remind you if you wish to ask any questions during the event, kindly use the Q&A platform and we will try our best to address your questions uh, during the events. There will be um, people answering questions. Uh, unfortunately, it's only for those in the Zoom platform. So uh, next, now that we know what the RTC is about, we now invite Dr. Zalila Abdullah to enlighten us on why there is a need for implementation research in the Western Pacific region. Dr. Zalila is the head of the Center for Health Policy Research at the Institute for Health Systems Research. Dr. Zalila, the mic is yours. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Aino, for the introduction. Today, I would like to share uh, my, my presentation on the need for implementation research in the region. Next. So what is implementation research? 
it is an integration of evidence-based health intervention in, into the community setting, which at the end benefit the population health. Next. So in plain language, let's say we call the intervention is the thing. Effective research looks at whether the thing works. Implementation research look at how best to help people do the thing and implementation strategies are the activity we do to try help people to do the thing. Main implementation outcomes are how much and how well people do the thing. Next. So this is a diagram shows an implementation research concept model where the intervention to be adopted into particular setting it needs strategies to be in place, such as uh, implementation, uh, such as system environments need to be adjusted or modified, or maybe learning that need to that help the implementer to understand the intervention and how to do the thing. So whether the strategies are suitable or successful. We measure it by looking at implementation outcomes, such as acceptability, sustainability, uptake, and fidelity. Uh, next. Okay. To do this, the implementation strategies or evaluation are guided with theories and framework. What question that need to be answered? So it can, it does, it have three main approach. One approach is prescribing, guiding a process, translating research into practice, such as knowledge to action framework. And another is explaining what influence implementation outcomes uh, as in the slides. And also lastly, the evaluating implementation. Next. So in 2016, Malaysia and Malaysia embarked on Malaysia Health System Research for this project, a few performance issue in our health system was identified. I would like to highlight the last two issues where access to comprehensive care were a problem and inadequate management of NCD, which lead to, next, Enhanced Primary Health Care Initiative or project. Enhanced Primary Health Care was conducted from 2017 to 2018 in Selangor and Johor. It, in total, 40 clinics involved in the project. Next. Objective of the study is actually, is to enhance the health, Malaysia, the health of Malaysia through systematic Apologies, um, I think there's some technical. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, Dr. Zari. All right, I'm here back. Sorry again. Okay. Can I have the next slide? Okay. It focuses on community, where it looks at the screening of the community level and also at a health clinic where it introduce, introduce person-centered care in the health clinic. And the third one is the hospital where it looks at the communication, communication between clinic and hospital to have a seamless care. Next. In the study, there are several interventions were introduced. In this slide, I would like to highlight three interventions that took place in health clinic. 
So the first one is family health clinic originated with from family doctor concept where it looks like one doctor for one family, but it has been modified into one family health team for a family. So the team involved family medicine, medi medicine specialist, medical doctor, nurses, and paramedic, which use no, uh, NCD care form as a form that contain all the patient information. It also use uh, risk stratification, where it, it categorizes the patient into mild, moderate, and high risk, where there, where there is a different management of disease and frequency of appointment. Clinical audit to look at the quality of the NCD care management. Okay, next. Uh, next. Okay, how to implement the intervention? We looked at the evidence-based practice and divided the strategies into pre-implementation, implementation, and also maintenance, which evolve uh, multiple level of organization. In pre-implementation, the aim is to get the the to get ready for the implementation. So it involves resources, training, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. For implementation, the aim is for troubleshooting and provide solution uh, of uh, failed strategies or failed practice. And in maintenance, is actually the supportive and also the improvement activities for the implementers. Next. This strategy come about from from policy maker, program implementers and researcher sit down together and do the need assessment and also coming up with the implementation and evaluation strategies. Next. So when you have the implementation strategies, but you also need to know what are the barriers and facilitators in the strategy that will influence the implementation outcomes. In these slides, uh, when we try to, when we implement care coordinator, we also look what was the implementation determinants such as outer setting and inner setting that will help the policy maker and program owner to understand what needed to be included, to, to be included uh, in the scale up or, or expansion plan for the program. Next. Okay. Why, I, why is IR needed in the region? Okay. IR forms a bridge between policymaker, academia, implementer, researcher, which allow collaboration activities to be uh, activities. So training in IR enable the team members to have some understanding about the strategies. Implementation fidelity, stress on adherence to the strategy, any deviation, it should be documented as evidence. Bear in mind, translating policy into practice is a challenge. Next. So the consortium provide IR training opportunities. Please contact any of us for more information. Next. I would like to thank all of our partners and collaborators for the journey throughout the implementation, uh, throughout Enhanced Primary Healthcare Project. With that, I thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zalila, uh, for the very informative um, sharing. Um, next, for, next on the agenda is a special message uh, from the representative of the special program 
for research and training in tropical diseases or TDR, uh, which is funding the RTC for the Western Pacific region that is that will be launched today. Let's invite Dr. Dermot Maher, Unit Head of Research Capacity Strengthening, Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases to deliver his message. Dr. Maher, over to you. Honourable Deputy Director General and colleagues of the Ministry of Health, distinguished guests, it's a great pleasure to be here at the launch. So thank you very much for inviting me as the representative of TDR. We heard a little bit earlier that TDR is a special program. Why are we a special program? We're co-sponsored by four uh, international agencies, U UNICEF, UNDP, World Bank, and the World Health Organization. And it's the World Health Organization that also hosts us at the headquarters here in Geneva. Now, TDR is a relatively modest sized program with a total of 30 people, normally sitting, of course, in the office at the main WHO campus in Geneva. And now we're mostly sitting at home in and around Geneva. So since we're a modest team of 30 people in TDR in total, how do we hope to achieve a global impact? And of course, that's by working through a global network of partners, such as the partners who are represented here at the launch. Now, as regards strengthening capacity for research and in particular implementation research, one of the key networks for TDR is the network of regional training centers that we support, one in each of the WHO regions. So just to indicate briefly which those are, in the European region, we have the medical school in Astana in Kazakhstan. For the Eastern Mediterranean region, it's the Pasteur Institute in Tunis, Tunisia. African region, the School of Public Health in Accra in Ghana, that I think Pascal knows quite well. We have in the Southeast Asia region, the University of Gadjah Mada in Yogyakarta in Indonesia. In the region of the Americas, it's an institute in Cali, Colombia. And of course, here now for the Western Pacific region, we're welcoming the consortium to join the network. And of course, in order to become a regional training center supported by TDR, we generally advertise with an open call and have a competition, which is uh, um, judged then by an independent panel. So this is a very important part in the process that there's a competitive process for uh, an institution, or in this case, a consortium to become one of the regional training centers supported by TDR. So the Malaysian Global Health Consortium joins this network around the world to help develop, promote and disseminate training and to strengthen capacity for research, particularly implementation research. This is a very dynamic area as we see how far we can go pushing virtual training to reach as many people as possible and achieve the greatest impact. Now, it's hard to talk about COVID without uh, saying a cliche, really, because everything has been said about COVID. But the cliche I want to say now is that uh, COVID represents a challenge and an opportunity, many challenges and also many opportunities, in fact. So the opportunity that we're really grasping as we uh, struggle with COVID is to make the most of the use of virtual trainings, which people were doing and TDR was doing, the regional training centers were doing before COVID, but of course, COVID has given it a massive boost. We're all living in a virtual world. It's a pleasure to see you in the virtual world. We're all working in a virtual world. So one of the opportunities is how far can we go promoting the virtual training that has the advantage of reaching many more people than you can reach through the in-person training so that we can achieve the greatest impact in diminishing the burden of infectious diseases of poverty all around the world. So those are my brief words uh, from TDR. Thank you again very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to join you for the launch. We will be in close contact with the consortium because we'll be working closely with you as you develop and implement your program of activities, uh, undertaking those activities in the region here. And as we heard earlier, interacting with the other regional training centers in order to synergize and to obtain the benefits of what I understand in Malaysia, you call unity is strength. So on that note, on the national motto, I would like to thank you very much and hand back over to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maher, and especially for joining us uh, at such an early time in Geneva. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Um, the time we've been waiting for has finally come. May I now invite Yambo Bahagira to Dr. Hisham Shah bin Muhammad Ibrahim, Deputy Director General of Health, Research and Technical Support, to deliver the opening speech and thereafter officially launch the regional training, support a training center supported by TDR in the Western Pacific region. Yambo Bahagira to. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aino, Chairperson for today. Uh, Professor Dr. April Kamila Ruslani, uh, Professor Dr. Dr. Adiba Kamaruzaman, uh, Dr. Pascal Aloti, uh, Dr. Nur Iza Haji Ahmad Shauki, and Dr. Dr. Zalila from IHSR NIH, uh, Dr. Demot Maher, and I saw uh, Dr. Ranji Sampal uh, somewhere just now, and colleagues, distinguished colleagues, yeah? Uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, the organizing committee for inviting me to officiate the opening ceremony of the Implementation Research Regional Training Center, IRRTC, in Malaysia. On behalf of the Ministry of Health Malaysia, let me warmly welcome everyone here this afternoon, yeah? This morning for uh, Dr. Mahe. Uh, Dr. Yeah, apologies and salam and warm regards from uh, Tan Sri uh, Nur Hisham, who couldn't be with us today because he's busy in another meeting. We've been like this uh, for the past one year. Uh, challenging period ahead. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, as, uh, as we can all appreciate, the COVID-19 pandemic in the past year has uh, disrupted and affected our lives uh, in so many ways. Some of the concerning effects, among others, include, number one, uh, the decreased number of patients seeking emergency care as emergency departments across our country now are treating COVID-19 patients or suspected COVID-19 patients. And number two, uh, there's a delayed care for less urgent conditions such as uh, dental procedures as well as eye care, as an example. Yeah? And number three, there is also disruption of care for non-communicable diseases which requires follow-up. All of these disruptions can have a daunting effect in the immediate as well as the long term uh, of the population health of our country. So to develop a resilient health system, the need arises to think of a new strategies to deliver care despite the many evolving challenges as well as limitations. However, effectiveness of these new strategies of old or even known interventions that is yet to be tested. And I think this is where implementation research plays its vital role. So what is implementation research? Uh, it is defined by the World Health Organization's Alliance for Health Policy and System Research as the scientific study of the processes used in the implementation of initiatives, as well as the contextual factors that, that affects these processes. EHP SR suggests that a major purpose of implementation research is to support and promote the successful application of interventions that have been demonstrated to be effective. So why is research on implementation needed? Despite the abundance of evidence on the efficacy of affordable, life-saving interventions, there is less understanding of how to deliver those interventions effectively in diverse settings and within the wide range of existing health systems. Well, what works in Indonesia or elsewhere might not work in Malaysia, for example, due to the differences in socio, cultural, and as well as other uh, you know, uh, peculiarities in the region. So issues that arise during implementation could be the result of contextual factors, factors that were not extensively considered. So implementation research can provide a means to broaden and deepen our understanding of real world factors and how they Im impact on its implementation. Its immense value is in shining the light on the often bumpy interface between what can be achieved in theory and what happens in practice. Well, thankfully, interest in implementation research is growing, largely in recognition of the contribution it can make to maximizing the beneficial impact of health interventions as a relatively new and until recently rather neglected field within the health sector, implementation research is a concept that may raise many questions. There is therefore a need for greater clarity 
about what exactly implementation research is and what it can offer. I hope uh, the establishment of this IRRTC will be able to provide that clarity and produce experts in the field with a common aim of improving health systems within the region. This year, Malaysia is proud to be selected as the latest member of the RTC network, which is supported by the WHO TDR as part of its capacity building program. RTCs were set up in each of the WHO regions and Malaysia will be representing the Western Pacific region. The Minister of Health would like to extend our appreciation to the WHO TDR for seeing the potential that Malaysia can contribute positively to this initiative. The Malaysian RTC, known as the Malaysian Global Health Consortium for Implementation Research, is a joint collaboration between University of Malaya, UNIIGH, and the Institute for Health Systems Research under the Ministry of Health Malaysia. The consortium aims to build capacity in implementation research, providing training and coordinating implementation research training across uh, courses across multiple countries in this region. Last but not least, I would like to congratulate the, the organizing committee for hosting this event, as well as all of the consortium members that have worked relentlessly and contributed so much for the establishment of the Malaysian Global Health Consortium for Implementation Research. Lastly, in the future, we hope capacities in implementation research will be strengthened, giving us a better understanding of real world factors and how they impact implementation of health interventions. Uh, lastly, before I forget, for those in Malaysia, please register for the COVID-19 vaccination. There's only 6 million, uh, you know, re having registered, we are aiming for at least 25 million amongst Malaysians. Regardless whether you are, you know, citizens or non-citizen, as long as you are in Malaysia, please register for the COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Uh, I bid you a successful meeting today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yamabagi Ratut, Dr. Hisham Shah, for officiating the RTC. 
We hope all of you enjoyed the brief uh, video presentation. Before we end, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the organizing committee would like to request for a photo session with all the attendees, invited attendees. Kindly turn on your cameras. Have we got almost everybody or everybody? Are we ready? Smile. One, two, three. One more time. Yeah, one more time. Are you ready, cameraman? One, two, three. Okay. Thank you very much. Distinguished, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We have now reached the end of the launch ceremony of the RTC in the Western Pacific region. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank all of you for joining us at this auspicious event. Do visit our websites uh, of the three consortium members for announcements on upcoming uh, activities on, of the RTC. The RTC itself does not have a website yet. Have a good evening, everybody. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Very good launch, excellent, good work, and we look forward to plenty of good work in the future. Thank you, Damon. Thank you. Thank you, Damon. It went really well, excellent. Congratulations. So we'll be in close contact. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Well done, everyone. Congratulations.